and welfare of the St. Martin nation must be the responsibility of the St. Martin people. That nothing will change unless the St. Martin people decide to change everything, gentlemen, everything. That, a, that over 120 nationalities on St. Martin and no St. Martin nationality on St. Martin is madness. And it is because of our commitment and oneness with the St. Martin people that the Independence for St. Martin Foundation come before Parliament, you ladies and gentlemen, to present its case for a third referendum 16 years after the 2000 referendum. A third referendum which according to Article 92 of the Constitution of St. Martin, and I quote, are conducted at the initiative of Parliament, end of quote. A third referendum in which the people of St. Martin in a peaceful, popular, and decisive manner can determine through the ballot the future of their island and nation. St. Martin cannot liberate or save itself through the goodwill or intervention of others. It cannot pretend to be what it is not. It cannot expect others to do for it what it must do for itself. It cannot lie down and play dead. It cannot commit suicide. The St. Martin nation must most productive way of liberating itself from the dehumanizing mental and physical slavery which it endured for hundreds of years is through a peaceful and popular referendum. A peaceful referendum which is part of the St. Martin mentality and a universal accepted means for people to express themselves. For it is through the peaceful, fearless, and honest exercise of the ballot that St. Martiners will not only ensure the creation of a democratic society, which we have never existed or never have enjoyed because St. Martin has always been a colony, whether you like to call it a colony or not, but also maintain such a society for the way a thing is created. If we create a, a democratic society, is the way it will be maintained. We have been maintained for all these years through foreign dictatorship, and it's still there. It was created as a foreign dictatorship, and we still are recorded a foreign dictatorship. Self-determination, self-reliance, and independence, therefore, is the only way forward for St. Martin and its people. St. Martiners, over the centuries, have been forced by others, without their approval, to suffer and experience slavery, colonialism, and autonomy, all of which turned out to be destructive and disastrous to the St. Martin nation. Honorable chair ladies and members of parliament, you are the nation's highest body. You must now step forward and use your power and make a third referendum on St. Martin, for St. Martin, on independence for St. Martin. In reality, a grateful nation will never forget what you have done. Life is a journey full of connections. You're in safe hands even when life starts too soon. You don't have to miss a single beat. When a bad hair day makes you sad, just sharing can bring you joy and more to come. They take the plunge, turn fear into faith, while you capture those beautiful moments. In the game of life, it's family that counts. They'll be there even when you lose. We all have our moments of reflection and hope. And when you feel you're losing everything in life, we're there because there's more to come. When life starts too soon, you don't have to miss a single beat. We're here to connect you and share life. Tell so when you want
has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Um, I too saw lines indicating that the Alexis Arnell Road appears to be a two way street. Um, so the question was asked to me whether that is the case. Um, because if you, um, in Cold Bay, or if you're going down the hill uh, from, from um, Cake House, Coyman area, if you're going down the hill, down, and, and, and when you reach to the Cold Bay section, you would see markings on the right side that you can go straight. Now, I don't know if you're going straight, what straight you're going into. Um, you can make a red, right. No, you can make a right, sorry, and you can make a left from the right lane and the lane which going down the hill is on the left side has an arrow that you can go up the hill. Now it would be confusing, uh, particularly for tourists, if you reach there and you see the sign. I spoke just before we went on air uh, with uh, Mr. Tony Chibon Campo of uh, the, 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 the maintenance department of, at Vromi, and he said, no, they're busy uh, finishing the signage, because accompanying that is a sign that would say um, no true traffic uh, to Phillipsburg. Um, why is that sign there? Is because, as you all would know, the, the two-way traffic is up to uh, the home of um, uh, uh, La Veste, uh, family family house. I think one house higher than that. Mr. Louis Levesque's mother's house um, is the house before the last house, I think, but it's up to there because those people can access their property from there. Um, and coming down the hill, I think it's there the, 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 on the first climb, those people who live there can come down as well. But other than that, you don't have true traffic that can come from Port of Plaisance, uh, come up Colby, and then access. So yes, it's a valid point to have brought to my attention, because I frowned when I saw it also. Um, but that is uh, what it is. So it's, it's, it's a road signage, but actually not completed. And the two things should have gone hand in hand, because a tourist visiting would now think, I can go up the hill there. But not only a tourist visiting, anybody living in St. Martin um, would think that it's a changed situation now and I can access the traffic from there.
Oh my, oh my. What an inventory list and so unnecessary. But wait, your home contents are all insured by Be Sure. That means that you determine the amount you want to insure. No inventory list, no asshole. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. <laughs> Bob, I can understand why you're parking so carefully. Of course, when you can get 80% discount on your Be Sure car insurance. <laughs> but that's overdoing it, Bob. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. Yeah. afford what you crave, life just gets so good. KFC, so good for everyone. These are the doors that never close. These are the hands that make a difference. These are the walls that could tell countless stories of helping and healing, of storms weathered, of change and growth, of a place where life begins, where hearts are mended, and where hope grows stronger. For more than a quarter of a century, the physicians, medical professionals, and staff of St. Martin Medical Center have combined advanced medical technology and compassionate care to bring a world of medicine to our friends, neighbors, and visitors to the island of St. Martin we all call home. As proud as we are of what we have accomplished, we believe there is still much work to do to continue a proud tradition of providing everyone in our community with the latest technology, the best medicine, and the most exceptional care. St. Martin Medical Center, celebrating 25 years of serving, caring, healing. And today you got a, a very good um, position of a lot of the um, concerns, I would say. Um, you know, you, you have certain parliamentarians that are former police, certain parliamentarians that are doctors, and, um, uh, you know, over the, the abusive nature of it as well, not only of cannabis or marijuana, but also in other drugs throughout the island. So you, get a, you have gotten a, a good amount of concern here from everyone here today, and, and you know, I look forward to the debate continuing. But of course, also the issue of the medicinal um, purposes, and and I've seen a lot of um, programs with what cannabis can do, especially in terms of medicinal uh, purposes. Um, the the real issue to me, while I, I'm probably a believer in the medicinal part of it, the the issue of the recreational use is going to cause, I think, uh, a much more, um, I would say, heated debate than anything else and how you're going to um, yeah, control it, how you're going to police it, um, is it going to be available for everybody, um, you know, you, you, ha you have the issue of, of course, abuse of anything, uh, when you overdo something, of course, is the, is the main issue, whether it be alcohol or, or whatever as well, and uh, that comes the issue on Samaritan that, you know, if you just open it for everyone, does that mean that, uh, you know, for recreational purposes, everybody driving down the street is going to be uh, flying high? We don't, we don't know, <laughs> you, you, you understand where we're going with that, or is it something going to be in uh, controlled areas? Um, do we allow it only for, for tourism, like you, you mentioned, Mr. Jagtani, and, uh, or do we allow it for local and tourism consumption and I'm, I'm talking strictly recreation because again like I said um, I understand the, the, the medicinal part and um, I think that that can be something that you know uh, is given out uh, of course with, with constraints and everything as well but I, I look forward again to the the answers that you I know you can give them today because there has been a lot of questions uh, been posed and a lot of concerns 
and I think that the you know, uh, Ras, you you brought a a, um, a nice delegation, but in echoing the sentiments of um, MP, um, the two Leonards actually, uh, the issue of forming a, a larger committee and and how we really further the discussion. Um, you all have brought the the issue of the medicinal part, the issue of the financial part, the issue of the growing part. But now also comes the issue of how we really legislate, how we really police um, this effect and to make it uh, possible for Sir Martin. You know, um, like I said, I know of, of members in Colorado that are growers <laughs> and they have it that you can have, like I think uh, you're allowed to get a permit to grow 20 uh, plants and you get 50 plants and it depends on this and it grows. So um, I, I've been reading up a lot about it as well. Like I said, I have a lot of pressure whether to be for or against. Um, but like I said, I'm enjoying the uh, discussion that we've been having here today. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would like to um, thank you all for being here and also thank you for you know pushing forward uh, this discussion within the, the general public of San Martin. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One. Get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two. Stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look up for the warning signs of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two. Three. Four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Okay, really give thanks to hear the other side of our honorable member of parliament then because that's why we're here. Because if you don't come here, we don't know how we're gonna make it work or how to start working. And to go to 
a honorable Yanchi Leonard. It's a tree. It's just a simple tree. It's the healing of the nation. Like the Bible tells us, herb is the healing of the nation. All herbs. I mean, if we could just say tomorrow, we can come with the law and say sweet basil is illegal, and then nobody can use sweet basil more. But now we can see they try to make it illegal, but we see the, what effect it do for the people then. To be regulated, to be controlled, is a must. You understand? Is that why we're here, to strike, because we cannot do it by our own. That's why we come here with all you, the lawmakers, to, for you to put head together and see how we can make it work. But it's just a simple herb, and I see more people get victimized and condemned for going to jail for a split than what the split is doing them personally. That being, we just, I give thanks that we can come here, even to hear to the other member of parliament, uh, Lloyd Richardson, but it's good, this is just a start, and we wouldn't give up, because um, last year or so, we start bringing presentation to the people, and we will continue to educate the people, and we have a Facebook page, Herbal Awareness, SXM, Yes, everybody can check Herbal Awareness XXM. This is a Facebook page. We give you information daily about it. And, you know, with hope one day, recreational is going to be difficult, we know. But for we to heal our people and medical, it's a blessing. We give thanks. But I, what I'm seeing is a general feeling that I want to be very clear about is that we really, at this stage, really are talking about the medical and a personal possession, small amount, privacy of the home type environment. Medical marijuana does not look like the boys under the tree with the joint. It is a clinical product. It comes in a box, in a, in a vial or, or something else. It looks just like medicine. It's not the the cannabis culture stereotype that you're thinking about. Medical marijuana is a medical product. And right now, there are, for example, uh, one of the country, uh, companies that I've been looking at, we were talking about the pharmaceuticals, they are currently advising the 15 members of CARICOM right now on how to set up a serious and viable medical facility for production. They have the experience. This is an Israeli company, just one example. A, a company has been doing it for 20 years. What I was suggesting was the concept of a, I, I hate to use the word experimental, but a research facility for the medical aspect that we set up here under full control, under a, a well-defined legal and uh, implementation program, that we can see how it works. We can we can use this as a as an experiment to to a certain degree. I think the other aspect. I, I fully agree with my colleagues here as well with the distinguished members of parliament, recreational is the big trigger issue. It's the problem issue. I think that we should take this a step at a time. And if we look at the medical first and we deal with it in a very sec, medically, clinically controlled way, then we will have more time and more information to educate the community about yes or no on full-blown recreational. I do think that there are some interesting models that we could use for personal use. Uh, the Australian model, where they allow an individual, if they want to smoke cannabis or have cannabis product, then they grow it themselves. They're allowed two or three plants. And if they want it, then they do it themselves and that way and keep it in their own yard and keep it. I think that we have to have a realistic uh, personal possession um, amount. Um, so that within the discussion of recreational, I think needs to be clarified. But we really are talking about at this stage, the medical aspect. All of us understand the scientists have made it very clear 
but if we could create, and this could be fully funded from outside, this wouldn't cost government. It would be government cost to monitor and control it, yes. But it would be able to be financially covered by companies or individuals that it would take care of itself, a kind of a research center. Say, one acre of land and a greenhouse type structure with a laboratory attached to it in which the, the processing and all the aspects of its production were right there in the one facility, easy to monitor, easy to control.